This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It is 5 o'clock here on your Monday. Good morning to you. I'm Meredith Barrick. Here's what's making headlines on this March 16th. For a while, life is not going to be the way it used to be in the United States. We have to just accept that if we want to do what's best for the American public. As the number of COVID-19 cases continues to grow both here at home and across the country, leaders call for drastic measures to prevent the spread of the disease. And as schools across central Indiana close due to the coronavirus, several organizations are stepping up to feed students and families in need. We've got details on where you can turn for help. Plus, the new season of American Idol is here, and some Hoosiers may recognize a familiar face. The Journey One Anderson grad is taking in hopes of reaching stardom. But first, we need to get a check of your Storm King 6 forecast. Meteorologist Todd Clausen here. Todd, what's it like out on our Monday? You know, it's pretty quiet this morning. Of course, we're coming off that kind of shock on a Saturday with the snow that was falling across a good chunk of the area. And as you walk out the door, and while the radar is quiet right now, it'll kind of change a little bit as we get into the afternoon hours. But we're talking just rain today, not talking any snow. That is the good news. But the clouds continue to make their way through the area here this morning. We'll expand out a little bit further. And this is where you see our storm system for later on this afternoon. If you even want to call it that, it's not really going to be a storm. It's just a little disturbance that's going to be making its way through the area. That's going to give us the opportunity to pick up a few scattered showers here and there. And all these showers are going to be very, very light. That is the good news. Still holding on to 40 degrees in Bloomington and Terre Haute. As you work your way to the north, a little bit colder, 33 degrees in Peru. Uh, but we're above freezing. That is the good news. So going forward in this forecast, it's more clouds than anything. Temperatures will slowly climb up into the mid-40s later on this afternoon. Once we get past about 3, 4 o'clock, that's when we'll introduce the chance of some showers. We'll track those for you uh, using TrueCast coming up in just a few minutes. Todd, thank you. We begin this morning with our continuing coverage of the coronavirus outbreak. Over the weekend, some major developments happening. Four new cases of COVID-19 were confirmed in Indiana, bringing the total number to 19. That includes the first confirmed case in Hamilton County. So far, the Indiana State Department Department of Health says 121 people have been tested for the coronavirus. This morning, there are no reported deaths in Indiana from the virus. Meanwhile, across the country, the number of cases of COVID-19 has tripled since Wednesday. The CDC is reporting about 35,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 as of last night. Cases have been confirmed in 49 states, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and Washington, D.C. At least 66 deaths have been reported. The Lone State without a report of the coronavirus as of now is West Virginia. Health officials are urging Americans to practice social distancing or cancel or postpone all gatherings of 50 people or more for the next eight weeks in an effort to curb the spread of the virus. Hundreds of thousands of people depend on Indigo for their daily transportation. And while many people are able to work from home during this time, you may still be heading to the bus stop this morning to go to work. Our Alyssa Donovan is live at the live desk this morning with what Indigo is doing to keep their riders safe. Alyssa. Good morning, Meredith. Since Indigo is regularly in contact with the public, they tell me they already have some best practices incorporated in their day-to-day -day procedures to keep both drivers and passengers safe. But given the concern of the spread of COVID-19, they have made some changes. As a precaution, Indigo has increased the frequency of cleaning and sterilization of both buses and facilities. Indigo has also added extra staff so that these sanitization processes can be done without impacting bus schedules. Each bus is undergoing intense sanitation as well as the Carson Transit Center. Indigo representatives say they have been closely monitoring the status of the virus. Staff and executive leadership are having regular meetings about the topic and how to keep their riders and workers safe during this time. And they do ask that passengers take their own precautions as well before and after riding the buses or visiting any Indigo facilities like washing your hands or using hand sanitizer and covering your nose and mouth when coughing. Like many agencies, Indigo is closely monitoring coronavirus and its impact on the people of Indianapolis and will update the public if there are any changes to their services. 
Alyssa, thank you. Another local organization working to stop the spread of the virus is Ascension St. Vincent. Yesterday, the hospital system announced new procedures it would be putting into place. Starting Tuesday, all elective non-urgent surgeries will be canceled. That includes things like hip replacements, cosmetic surgeries, and non-critical heart procedures. Beginning today, all operating room employees will be screened. Visitor restrictions will also be enhanced. You can find a list of the new policies on the RTV6 app. And another school district is closing due to the coronavirus outbreak. The Tipton Community School Corporation will be closed starting today. E-learning days for students will start on Wednesday. As of right now, classes will start back up on April 6th after spring break. The district says a definite decision will be made as that date approaches, depending on the current conditions surrounding COVID-19. The mass closing of schools to help prevent the spread of COVID-19 is creating a different health concern. How to feed the thousands of families who rely on school districts for meals. IPS and many other corporations are still providing food during the closures, but they're having to get creative to avoid large crowds. That's why the IPS food service team is passing out free prepackaged meals in the parking lot at seven schools and two apartment complexes. You can find a list of those sites and times as well as other locations across central Indiana by going to our website, theindychannel.com. And a local restaurant chain is converting some of its locations into temporary food markets to help feed Hoosiers in need. Ed Som, the owner of Som's Restaurants, says breads, ready-to-eat foods, and bulk meals will be available. They are hoping to sell items as close to cost as possible, keeping as many employees on staff as possible. Ten EMTs in Johnson County are in quarantine as a safety precaution this morning. The fire chief telling RTV6 those EMTs were in contact with a patient that may have had COVID-19. Our Kelsey Anderson joins us live in Greenwood with what steps are being taken to protect those firefighters, their families, and the community. Kelsey, good morning. Hey, good morning, Meredith. So Fire Chief Jeremy Pell, he tells us that he does not want the firefighters, their families, or the community to worry as 10 EMTs are in quarantine here, or excuse me, eight are in quarantine here at the White River Fire Department. He says it's just a precaution. It comes after a call on Saturday for a patient with respiratory problems who ultimately stopped breathing and did not survive. Tests are now being run to determine if that patient had the coronavirus. The fire department is taking recommendations from the CDC, which means Eight EMTs are in quarantine at the old fire station on Smolnick's Road, and two are in quarantine at home. Something Chief Pell says they are doing this simply out of precaution. It was merely the lack of information that caused us to say, let's do this. So then there's no question. And that's where I think the community can take some comfort. The department staff were still taking calls, and we've done exactly what we should to make sure that until we find out for sure that we keep these crews from uh, interacting with anyone else. The 10 EMTs are off work for the next 48 hours. The fire chief hopes to get the test results back before then. If they do not have to be quarantined for 14 days, if they, excuse me, if they do have to be quarantined for 14 days, this will impact the fire department. But Chief Pell says they are prepared to get their spots filled and still be able to protect the community. Now, it is important to let dispatchers know if you think that you could have the coronavirus. Chief Pell says it's important to let them know that way firefighters and other first responders can take those extra precautions so they can still come out and respond to those emergency situations. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. The United Way of Central Indiana and other community partners announced a multi-million dollar fund to help ease the economic impact of the coronavirus on Central Indiana families. The Central Indiana COVID-19 Community Economic Relief Fund kicked off Friday with $16.5 million in donations. 15 million of that was from the Lilly Endowment, the Richard M. Fairbanks Foundation, and the Eli Lilly and Company Foundation and the United Way of Central Indiana each contributed $500,000 each. The funds will be helped to use Hoosier families impacted financially by the virus. We are in unprecedented times. A disease none of us had heard of a couple of months ago has now completely transformed the way we work, changed the way we gather, halted our travel, and without a doubt will compound the challenges facing too many children, parents, adults, and seniors who were already struggling to make ends meet every single day. 
The fund is modeled after one that provided similar financial support to organizations and individuals following the 2008 recession. With so much information out there, we want to help you and your family navigate the coronavirus. Everything you need to know is in one place. Just head to the IndyChannel.com slash coronavirus. It is time to figure out who is the next American Idol. And last night, a Hoosier native took the stage in front of the all-star panel of judges, Luke Bryan, Lionel Richie, and Katy Perry. Luke Stafford is an Anderson native and graduate of Anderson University. He is now based in Los Angeles, but the up-and-coming star doesn't forget where he came from. He went to Highland High School and took part in just about everything from marching band to show choir to student government. Luke sings in a style he calls pop jazz and is a multi-talented guy. He tells us the day of his idol audition, things didn't go quite as planned, but he still loved the experience. I went on the show. Um, I was there. I ended up going last. Uh, the day of the audition, um, I lost almost all my voice. I played the saxophone as well. Um, and they were all very kind and basically just said, you got to take care of that voice. Um, Katie was also really encouraging. You know, she um, was really sweet. And she said that, if I recall, she said something about if you can do that, you really got something special. No spoilers here to find out how Luke did last night. You can check out his social media sites. We've got a link to those online. American Idol airs Sunday and Monday at 8 p.m. only here on RTV6. He's got a great voice, Todd. I think he'll go far. I mean, I... That's just my opinion, though. I, you know. Yeah, no. <laughs> Sounds awesome. So, you have to continue to watch American Idol over here on RTV6. All right. As you walk out the door this morning, if you have to walk out, uh, you're walking out to pretty quiet conditions. That is the good news. And temperatures are sitting in the 30s right now across the area with skies that are mostly cloudy. The clouds are in the process here of increasing across the area, which you can see on our satellite radar picture. There's still a few breaks here in northern locations, but the clouds will continue to thicken up. And then you see these showers off to our west. All these showers are pretty scattered in nature. And generally, it'll weaken as it makes its way in our direction. So we're only looking at a few hit or miss showers, which will be very, very light later on this afternoon and this evening. Nothing to cancel any plans. But if you're going to be out and about, you may want to have the umbrella handy once we get past, say, 3, 4 o'clock this afternoon. Highs will be in the 40s, a little bit below normal, but not all that bad. We do have a warming trend heading our way. And we could be in the 70s by later on this week. More on that coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. The time now is 5-12. We'll be right back. Tonight event continues tonight on ABC. I tried earlier this week to appeal to everyone's good judgment to stay home, to avoid bars, not to congregate in crowds. It's unfortunate that many people didn't take that seriously. The time for persuasion and public appeals is over. The time for action is here. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker issuing harsh words for the public after ordering all bars and restaurants in the state to close their doors to dine-in customers. That order will take effect tonight. It comes after crowds of people descended upon downtown Chicago to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, contrary to recommendations from health officials. The move follows similar actions by the governors of Ohio and California and the mayors of D.C. and Nashville, Tennessee. Speaking to CNN Sunday, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases says drastic measures are needed to curb the spread of the new coronavirus. People sometimes think that you're overreacting. I like it when people are thinking I'm overreacting because that means we're doing it just right. Dr. Fauci also said while the worst is yet to come, how we respond now will determine the ultimate outcome of when this is all over. We reached out to Governor Eric Holcomb's office to see if similar plans are underway in Indiana. His office released a statement saying, quote, the outbreak continues to evolve and Governor Holcomb continues to evaluate the situation. We will send out notice of any decisions that are made. 
Meanwhile, the governors of Illinois and Ohio say their state's presidential primaries will go on as scheduled Tuesday, despite concerns about the coronavirus outbreak. Arizona and Florida are also scheduled to vote Tuesday night. Early voting has been underway for weeks in all four states, which may limit the crush at polling places. Georgia and Louisiana delayed their primaries last week. Georgia, which was scheduled for March 24th, moved its contest to May 19th. Louisiana, which was slated to vote April 4th, will now cast ballots June 20th. A Utah jazz player who tested positive for COVID-19 is donating $500,000 to help people affected by the outbreak. Rudy Gobert's diagnosis is what was part of what prompted the NBA to shut down. He's pledged to give $200,000 to the employee relief fund at the arena where the jazz play. He joins many other players pledging to help arena employees affected by the suspension, including Kevin Love, Blake Griffin, and Zion Williamson. Williamson, who is 19, says he will cover the salaries for all employees at the Smoothie King Center in New Orleans for the next 30 days. Here at 518 on your Monday morning, let's check in with meteorologist Todd Clausen. Yeah, as you walk out the door this morning, it's pretty quiet. And overall, this week is going to be a warm one. Today is probably the coolest day that we have, at least during uh, the work week. Once we get to the weekend, there's another shot of some colder air. But before that happens, a big warm-up is heading our way, including potentially maybe by Thursday, Friday, temperatures in uh, the 70s. This morning is dry, but a few spotty showers are possible this afternoon. The problem is, as that warmer air comes in, Later on this week, our rain chances, they are going to start to ramp up as well. 39 degrees, that's the current temperature. The winds are out of the east-northeast at 7 miles per hour right now. Sunrise officially at 754. I don't think we're going to see a ton in the way of sunshine today as the clouds will win out. But for the most part, uh, a good chunk of the day is going to be dry. It's not until later on this afternoon that a few spotty showers start to build in. 40 in Bloomington right now, a little colder to the north. Peru at 33, it's also 33 over in uh, the Richmond area, and you notice temperatures across much of the Midwest, really within a couple degrees of each other, a little colder in Chicago at 31, uh, Nashville's at 42 degrees. Hour by hour throughout the day, we'll climb out of the 30s into the 40s, probably by about 11 a.m., and then we're into the mid-40s for your afternoon highs. Very similar temperature-wise to yesterday. The difference today, a lot more in the way of cloud cover compared to yesterday, which featured a lot of sunshine, and the clouds already starting to increase across the area, and the rain is off to our west, but this will make its way in an easterly direction throughout the day today. However, there's not a lot of support for the rain uh, to maintain itself. So it's just a weak little system that will just bring the chance, as you look at TrueCast here, of a few spotty showers coming through here and there across the area. Any showers you do see will be very, very light. So just have the chance of a shower or two in the forecast this afternoon and evening. You may want to have the umbrella handy, even if you did uh, get a shower. It was not going to last a very long, and a few of those showers will continue into tomorrow morning's commute as well. But the big thing I mentioned is going to be the warming trend heading our week. 52 is our average high. We should get there tomorrow, and then we're all the way up into the 60s and potentially 70s through Friday uh, before we see a big cool down heading into the weekend. So it's 63 on Wednesday, 70 on Thursday with some showers that will start to build in. Even Friday, Meredith, we could see a few spotty thunderstorms. Todd, thank you. We're going to take a live look at I-70 at Emerson Avenue. You can see only a few cars and semis out there this morning. Many people working from home. Schools canceled this morning across central Indiana. So we expect traffic to be fairly thin throughout the entire morning rush hour and the day. No issues to report right now. Some U.S. grocery store chains are changing their operating hours in response to the coronavirus outbreak. Walmart is shortening hours at all of its stores. The chain says the new hours will be 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Employees will work the same schedules, but the break will give them time to restock the shelves. Kroger is also temporarily shifting their service hours. Stores will now be from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. The Tennessee Attorney General is investigating two brothers who hoarded at least 18,000 bottles of hand sanitizer. Matt and Noah Colvin were hoping to profit on the COVID-19 demand. After the first death in the United States, Matt Colvin went state to state buying out hand sanitizer at stores. But later he was banned from selling the items online by both eBay and Amazon for price gouging. The Tennessee AG also ordered them to stop. According to the website mattcolvin.com, the hand sanitizer is now being donated to a local church. Matt Colvin has also apologized for his actions.
Beyonce is teaming up with Adidas once again, the singer releasing more of her Ivy Park sports apparel line. The original line sold out immediately after its surprise January release online. Fans can expect both clothing and footwear. The company plans to target more female customers. You can expect to see the new Ivy Park line later this year. Tom Hanks is giving fans an update on how he is doing since being diagnosed with COVID-19. His message to fans and how he is keeping busy while quarantined coming up. And only on RTV6, the state's former top health commissioner discusses the fight against COVID-19 in Indiana. Hear his message to Hoosiers. 2020 Central. Tom Hanks is updating fans on how he and his wife, Rita Wilson, are doing. The couple are currently in isolation after being treated in Australia after contracting the coronavirus. In a tweet posted yesterday, Hanks said, quote, thanks to the helpers, let's take care of ourselves and each other. The couple have been keeping busy talking to fans on social media, and they even shared their Spotify playlist titled Quarantunes. Some of the songs include I Want to Break Free by Queen, <laughs> Survivor by Destiny's Child, and I will survive. You got to have a good attitude right. in the times like these. I mean, there are times to be serious and then obviously Tom and Rita seemingly doing well. Mm -hmm. So trying to keep a good attitude about it despite the circumstances. Yeah, I like this one the other day when he had the ball the volleyball, and then he mm -hmm. made his famous quote from A League of Their Own. Yeah. There's no crying in baseball. Yeah, so they're having fun Yeah, with they're it. having a good time. All right, outside right now, temperatures are in the 30s. 48, your high today. A few spotty showers in the afternoon. They'd all be very, very light if you see them at all. St. Patrick's Day tomorrow, mostly cloudy, 56. Then the warmth builds in for the middle and end of the week. But with the warmth, will come some scattered showers, but no all-day rains. We'll talk more about this forecast and have your latest news headlines coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. Time now, it's 527. Today at 10 on RTV6. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. EMTs in Johnson County are in quarantine after they were called to help a patient possibly infected with COVID-19. The precautions they're now taking and the new ones being put in place by the CDC. And while many of us are able to work from home during this outbreak, there are others that can't, and they have to use public transportation to get there. The steps Indigo is taking to keep their passengers safe. But first, here at 530 on your Monday morning, we do want to check in with our weather. We had some sunshine yesterday. Todd, is that going to stick around for our Monday? Uh, no, the sunshine, unfortunately, is not going to be sticking around here throughout the day today. Yesterday, not a bad day. Temperatures just a few degrees below normal, but you had the sunshine, so that was the good news. So I did not check the sunglasses. Obviously, you need the jacket this morning. Your outdoor workout is good to go this morning. I also checked the umbrella. Just know you would not need to use that until later on uh, this afternoon into the evening hours. But even then, we're talking about a few spotty showers. Uh, nothing here that is going to be widespread. Storm Team 6 radar completely quiet now. Here are the clouds, though, that have been gathering throughout the overnight hours. They're still pretty thin in spots, so it's not out of question. There could just be a little bit of sunshine here and there once the sun comes up a little before 8 o'clock, uh, but that would be short-lived. And then here is the rain off to our west that will be heading in our direction uh, throughout the course of the afternoon and evening hours, but it's going to continue to fall apart as it makes its way into our area. 39 right now in the city, 40 in Bloomington, 36 in Muncie throughout the day today. We're talking just mostly cloudy skies, 42 degrees by the noon hour, 46 degrees by the time we get to 4 p.m. It would be 4 o'clock onward that those spotty showers, Meredith, make their way into our area. Todd, thank you. The Centers for Disease Control is issuing new precautions for Americans as the country continues to try and prevent the spread of the COVID-19. They say all gatherings of 50 people or more should be canceled or postponed for the next eight weeks. That includes conferences, festivals, concerts, and weddings. According to the CDC, travelers at such gatherings could bring the disease to communities that don't yet have it. Here in Indiana, four more people have been diagnosed with the coronavirus, bringing the total to 19. The new tally includes the first case in Hamilton County. The other three are in Marion County. 
And last night, Indiana State Police announced one of their employees has been diagnosed with COVID-19. That person is assigned to the State Police's Laboratory Division in Indianapolis. According to a release sent to our newsroom, the employee was admitted to a local hospital for medical issues and learned Sunday that they tested positive. A co-worker who was last known to work closely to the patient is now in self-quarantine at home. State Police have also been notifying additional employees. The release says that they are continuing to monitor the situation and follow virus mitigation practices for the health and safety of the employees and their families. Ten EMTs in Johnson County are also in quarantine this morning as a safety precaution. The fire chief tells RTV6 those EMTs were in contact with a patient that may have had COVID-19. Our Kelsey Anderson joins us live in Greenwood with what steps are now being taken to protect those firefighters, their families, and the community. Kelsey. Hey, good morning, Meredith. So Chief Jeremy Pell with the White River Township Fire Department says he does not want the community or the firefighters and their families to be worried. He says putting these 10 EMTs in self-quarantine is just a precaution. It comes after a call on Saturday for a patient with respiratory problems who ultimately stopped breathing and did not survive. Tests are now being run to determine if that patient had the coronavirus. The fire department is taking recommendations from the CDC, which means eight EMTs are in quarantine at the old fire station on Mullenix Road and two are in quarantine at home. Chief Pell says this isn't something the community should be alarmed about. In fact, I would say the exact opposite. We have procedures in place. Our crews provided excellent patient care. They took the proper precautions. They got the administration involved and we're keeping them safe and healthy away from their families so that we don't, you know, so that we don't contribute to the problem or contribute to the spread. The 10 EMTs are off work for 48 hours. The fire chief hopes to get the test results back before then. If they do have to be quarantined for 14 days, this will impact the department. But Chief Pell says they are prepared to get their spots filled and still be able to protect the community. Now, it's important to remind you, if you do need to call 911 for an emergency situation and you think that you could have the coronavirus, it is important that you tell that dispatcher that you could have the coronavirus. That way, those first responders can take those extra precautions so they can still serve the community and protect and protect themselves. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6. Kelsey, thank you. Universities are expanding precautions against the virus. Indiana University says they are now extending remote learning through the end of the spring 2020 semester. That means all of the remaining classes will be done online. To accommodate, IU also extended its spring break an additional week. They'll begin the remote instruction on Monday, March 30th. The university also canceled all Little 500 events. Butler University is closing residential housing to students because of the COVID-19 outbreak. Housing will be closed until at least April 4th. Butler's president is also recommending that students that live in Greek chapter houses or rental properties near campus move back home. He says any student diagnosed with the coronavirus on campus would need to return home or self-isolate. The university has already moved all classes online through April 4th. Many school districts across the state have already canceled classes. While kids are out of school, the Indiana Family and Social Services Administration has some additional recommendations. They say that children should observe social isolation and be at home and not in large child care settings. Families that need help finding or paying for child care during this time can contact Brighter Futures Indiana at 1-800-299-1627 to talk to a referral specialist. Well, some people can work from home in our city during this time. Many still have to go to work or depend on public transportation to get to the grocery store or the doctor. That is why Indigo is taking additional measures to keep their riders safe. Our Alyssa Donovan is at the live desk this morning with the latest on their efforts. Alyssa. Indigo is upping their sanitation efforts on buses and facilities as cases of COVID-19 increase across the state of Indiana. Thousands of people are still depending on the public transportation services, so Indigo has implemented additional procedures to ensure passengers and workers are as safe as possible during this time. Indigo has increased the frequency of cleaning and sterilizations of their buses, bus stops, and the Carson Transportation Center. A representative tells me since they regularly work so closely with the public, there are best practices in place, and the increased sterilization is in addition to day-to-day 
day cleaning that buses typically already undergo. They do ask that passengers and drivers are also doing their part by washing their hands or using sanitizers before and after riding the buses. Indigo staff and executive leadership are closely monitoring the status of COVID-19 in central Indiana. They're having regular meetings about the topic and how to keep riders and workers safe during this time. Alyssa, thank you. Later this morning, Vice President Mike Pence will release new updates to those federal guidelines. They will center around potential curfews and closures. He also said that more than 2,000 labs will have high-speed testing capabilities starting this week. But right now, the Vice President says it's important for people to pay attention to the decisions made by their state and local governments. What I would just recommend to the American people is to review those federal guidelines and know that we'll also uh, respect and defer to decisions that are made by governors, by state health departments about what's best for that community. There really is a plane here. I'm so excited. An update this morning to a story we have been tracking for more than a week now. Passengers from the Grand Princess cruise ship that have been quarantined in Georgia are finally home in Indiana. Last night we talked to Vicki Fisher, who is from Muncie, and another woman from Indianapolis who were quarantined at Dobbins Air Force Base in Georgia. They have been there since getting off the cruise ship in California last week, where more than 20 people tested positive for the virus. Many of the passengers from other states were getting released, but up until yesterday afternoon, Vicki and others were still waiting. We reached out to the governor's office, and they responded, saying that federal partners were working to fly them back. Vicki posted that they made it home just after 9 last night. With so much information out there, we want to help you and your family navigate the coronavirus. Everything you need to know is now in one place, including all the event cancellations, postponements, and school closings. Just head to the IndyChannel.com slash coronavirus. Here at 539, let's check in with our forecast for this Monday. Hey, Todd. As you walk out the door this morning, we're talking about pretty quiet conditions. That's the good news. If you are heading into work here this morning, uh, green lights with mostly cloudy skies. And as we work our way into to your evening drive, a few spotty showers were built in, and your windshield wipers may have to be on in a few spots here across central Indiana. But I still gave you the green light because these rain showers are going to be extremely light and a very, very spotty. And here they are off to our west right now, and they'll continue to make their way in an easterly direction, but they're going to weaken as uh, that happens. So, as far as our scale goes of rainfall coverage, how many of you are going to see these showers? Well, I think it's going to be a very few numbers number across the area. That's why we are putting it in the spotty category. If you do see these showers, they are very, very light. That is the good news. I really don't think it's going to hamper any travel later on this afternoon or this evening. We'll talk more about them, but also talk about some heavier rain that heads our way in the middle half of the week coming up in your main forecast in just a few minutes. Todd, thank you. The coronavirus left the Democratic debate without an audience last night. Coming up, what the presidential candidate said to be, needs to be done about the pandemic. And a big announcement for Colts left tackle Anthony Costanzo. Still ahead, what he decided about his future here in Indianapolis. It's 541. We'll be right back. The ARP name. Go ahead. Take advantage. Last night's Democratic debate was an unusual one because of coronavirus concerns. There was no audience. Both candidates also making pledges about who their future vice presidents would be. ABC's Andrea Fuji has the latest. Devoid of applause, Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders greeted one another with elbow bumps and podiums six feet apart in a largely empty room in Washington, D.C. amidst COVID-19 concerns. Both candidates agreed more must be done to combat this health crisis. Sanders criticizing President Trump. He is undermining the doctors and the scientists who are trying to help the American people. It is unacceptable for him to be blabbering with unfactual information, which is confusing the general public. The present system cannot handle the surge that is likely to come. So we should already be sitting down and planning where we're going to put these temporary hospitals. Both men in their 70s were asked how they're protecting themselves during this pandemic. I love doing rallies and we bring many thousands of people out to our rallies. I enjoy it very much. Uh, we're not doing that right now. In fact, our entire staff uh, is working from home. Biden pointed out that unlike Sanders' recent heart attack, he is in good health. Well, fortunately, I don't have any of the underlying conditions you talked about that I have to worry about. 
The candidates sparred over Social Security. Time and time again, talking about the need to cut Social Security, Medicare, and veterans programs. Is that true or is that no, not true? No, it's not true. What that is, is not true? That is not true. And a surprise announcement. Joe Biden says his running mate will be female. I commit that I will, in fact, appoint a, uh, pick a woman to be vice president. Sanders says he's also moving in that direction. Uh, in all likelihood, I, I will. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. Senator Lindsey Graham says he is not infected with the novel coronavirus. He has been awaiting test results and self-quarantine. The South Carolina Republican says on Twitter the head of the House Physician's Office cleared him. He's been in isolation since learning he might have interacted with someone who tested positive. That person is a spokesperson for Brazil's president. Representative Matt Gates of Florida also got tested for coronavirus. He went into self-isolation after interacting with someone at a CPAP event who later tested positive. As the coronavirus continues to halt travel, United Airlines says it might have to lay off employees. The company says it plans to cut capacity in half in April. United says it is opening talks with its unions about cost-cutting measures. Those could include furloughs, pay cuts, or even job losses. Top executives are reportedly taking a 50% pay cut. United says it has carried 1 million fewer passengers than normal in the first two weeks of March. The airline also predicts that until until coronavirus is under control, their numbers will continue to get worse. Starbucks says it is shifting to a to-go only model amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The coffee company announced it is closing some locations and reducing hours at others. For the ones remaining open, customers will have to get their orders to go. Indoor and patio seating will be closed, but drive throughs and delivery services will still operate. AMC Theaters is also taking precautions, saying it is cutting its audience capacity in half. It will do so by capping ticket sales at 50% or no more than 250 people at larger theaters. AMC says the reduction will run through April 30th. The company also says it is doing more to clean and sanitize its cinemas. Here at 548, let's check in with our weather for our Monday. And it's not a bad morning for us here, Meredith, as you get going on uh, this Monday morning. Temperatures are in the 30s and 40s, where, uh, depending where you live, 40 in Bloomington, a little cooler to the north as you inch closer to that freezing mark in Tipton, as well as Peru, Richmond. You're also sitting at 33 degrees, but it's 39 officially here in Indianapolis. And the good news is when you look at the temperature map across much of the eastern half of the country, uh, you notice the temperature aren't really all that much different. 40s to the south, 30s to the north, but there's no real cold Arctic air. There's no real summer-like warmth, but the overall trend here throughout this week will be to increase our temperatures a little bit each and every day. Now, today we have more in the way of clouds, at least compared to yesterday. Yesterday, we had all that sunshine and a high of 46 degrees. We'll probably be back right around 46 degrees later on this afternoon, but it won't feel quite as good because you have the cloud cover compared to the sunshine and by this afternoon, we'll also be talking about the potential for a little bit of rainfall. Now, this heavier rain, that is going to bypass us down to the south. We're just going to be dealing with these scattered showers making their way into the area. And they're really going to all be very, very hit or miss. We're not going to get into any steady rainfall. We're not going to get into any heavy rainfall. Uh, but just know as we get into the afternoon hours that those rain chances will continue to increase. We stopped it here at 1 o'clock, and you see the rain is just off to our west. I'll hit the button and advance it, and you notice the rain kind of breaks apart. So as it enters the state, it's going to be in a weakening state. And what that means is it's light and it's very spotty in nature. There's no prolonged period of rainfall. So if you do have plans, maybe this afternoon, this evening, to be out on a walk, to do something, get out of the house, uh, you may want to have the umbrella handy or maybe just a hooded jacket. But again, the rain will be light. And if you do see, it's not going to last very long. But we will maintain the shower chances in the forecast until about 6.30, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning and then the rest of your day tomorrow is going to be dry. How much rain are we talking about? Not a whole lot. This is just a couple hundredths of an inch. Uh, when you talk about two hundredths of an inch, that's probably barely enough to really wet the ground. So it's not a big rainmaker. Just don't want you to be surprised later on this afternoon if you get hit with a rain shower or two. There are those temperatures uh, that will be in the mid 40s here uh, for your afternoon high. Tomorrow after we get rid of that shower chance in the morning hours, we're back up into the 50s tomorrow with partly cloudy skies. Then going forward in this 
forecast. High temperatures as we get to the middle to end of the week will surge. Wednesday, 58. Thursday, 63. Friday, we could potentially be up to right around 70 degrees. So it may be a little optimistic on my part, but you'll definitely notice the warmer trend heading our way. The problem is with the warmth comes some rain. No all-day rains, but spring showers. And by Friday, when the cold front comes through, we could be talking about a round of thunderstorms. Meredith. Todd, thank you. We're taking a live look right now at I-465 at US 36 Rockville Road on the west side. You can see a few cars out there just ahead of the 6 o'clock hour. No issues to report on the roadways right now. SpaceX was forced to abort its latest launch mission after the rocket failed to lift off. SpaceX had planned to launch 60 Starlink broadband internet satellites into orbit Sunday morning. It was ready to launch out of NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The countdown clock made it all the way to zero, but nothing happened. The mission was aborted and officials say there was an issue involving the engine power. No word yet on when they plan to reattempt the launch. Some good news for the Indianapolis Colts during their offseason. Left tackle Anthony Costanzo has agreed to sign a two-year contract extension with the team for $33 million. That makes the 31-year-old lineman the highest paid left tackle in the league with an annual salary of $16.5 million. Costanzo has started all 132 games since the start of his career and has helped the team reach a top 10 rushing game for the first time since 2001. Millions on social media are falling in love with this unicorn puppy. We'll introduce you to the one-eared pup named Ray when we get back. Millions on social media are falling in love with an adorable unicorn puppy. This little golden retriever's name is Ray, and she was born with one ear. After a video was posted about the pup, thousands on Instagram and millions on TikTok fell in love. The breeder thinks her mother was trying to tear her amniotic sac open, and Ray's ear was bitten off. Ray was taken to the vet for surgery hours after birth. As she recovered, her other ear started growing towards the center of her head like a unicorn horn. Ray's new owners say her special feature doesn't phase her and that she has a big personality and a love for life. And Todd, I'm about to blow your mind. Ray, which is spelled R-A-E, is ear backwards. Ah, very clever of her owners, clever. isn't it? I would have never put that together. I know. Our producer Elizabeth just <laughs> came in my ear and said, hey, guess what I figured out? It's spelled backwards. I uh, said, don't tell Todd. I'm about to <laughs> shock him with that news there. That is good. And, and Ray is super cute, even so though the cute. ear is in a different spot than normal. Still super, super cute and gives you all the love that you need. All right, outside right now, temperatures in the 30s and 40s. So it's not a bad start to our day temperature-wise. Radar is completely quiet across the area. That'll change as the day goes on. Not in a big time way, but as the day does go into the afternoon and evening hours, there will be a few very light scattered rain showers that'll start to make their way into the area. I don't think you need to alter any plans. Just know that there'll be a few around. We'll talk more about them in detail coming up in just a few minutes. Your high today, that is up to 49 degrees. Stay with us. Good morning, Indiana is back on the other side of the top of the hour.